All right, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about Systems Manager Parameter Store. This feature addresses a pretty critical need, securely managing configuration and secrets within AWS. Parameter Store is an essential tool for caching and distributing secrets securely to AWS resources. So what exactly is Parameter Store? Well, this is a component of AWS Systems Manager, often abbreviated as SSM. So imagine for a second that you manage security for a large-scale application, which uses thousands of EC2 instances, all set to automatically build and be replaced if they fail. They're stateless, and they're designed to be swapped out, terminated, and replaced constantly to maintain the performance of the platform. So where do you store configurations? What about passwords? What about connection strings, host names, and anything else that your application needs to function? Traditionally, what we've done is we've stored secrets along with application code or hard-coded into applications and even stored within S3 buckets that are designed to host centralized configuration or centralized secrets, and that's really not ideal. Storing passwords or secrets anywhere can result in some pretty high-profile leakage. One fairly common scenario is that access keys or passwords are stored along with code inside a public GitHub repository. Once it's committed, these keys can be leaked and then we get an application exploit or other information security issues. Now, Parameter Store addresses this. It's a serverless, scalable, and high-performance system for storing data and secrets. Things like passwords, database connection strings, license codes, API keys, and so on. It's really one of my favorite services in AWS. It's something that I've started using extensively since it was introduced onto the platform. Now, the values that you store in Parameter Store can be encrypted using KMS keys, or they could be plain text. Now, by using Parameter Store, you can separate data from source control to avoid that scenario where we would potentially leak access keys into GitHub repositories, for example. Now, the coolest feature about Parameter Store, in my opinion, is the ability to store parameters in hierarchies. And we'll talk about that in just a second. You can also track versions of values in Parameter Store. So you can track and audit how values change over time or roll back if necessary. You can also set what's called a TTL or time to live to expire certain types of values such as passwords. This enables you to enforce password rotation. So let's talk about organizing parameters into hierarchies. With Parameter Store, your data can be stored hierarchically, which means that you can build tree-like structures like you see here in the diagram. So in this example, we have two hierarchies, dev and prod and these can represent your development or production environments. At each level of this hierarchical structure, we can retrieve data based on that level, so you can retrieve all the data for the entire prod tree if you want, or just the data for dev, db, mysql. You could represent a position in the hierarchy using a path, like you see here, prod, db, mysql, db-string. Because it's hierarchical, we're able to grant permissions at any point in this tree structure, so you're able to give administrators access to a single piece of information, maybe a single configuration item, or you can grant them access to an entire area for their application. Or we can grant teams access to whole environments, or maybe just prod, dev, or test. And these hierarchies can be up to 15 levels deep. Now to retrieve all parameters in a hierarchy, you can use the get parameters by path API call. So for example, to retrieve the entire dev hierarchy, you can specify a path of slash dev. If you want to retrieve just the parameters under the db branch of that tree, you would specify slash dev slash db. And if you want to retrieve all the parameters under the app branch of the prod tree, you can specify slash prod slash app, and so on and so on. Now, one really cool application of Parameter Store is its integration with CloudFormation. So here's an example of how we can use Parameter Store inside our CloudFormation templates. AWS makes available the latest AMI IDs in any given region via path in Parameter Store that they manage. You could see that path here on line four. So you can see here in this example, we can get the latest AMI ID for Amazon Linux 2 in our region and reference that in our EC2 instance resource. Here in our example, that's line 10. So there's no need to create and manage any complex mappings like we used to have to do prior to the introduction of Parameter Store. So I'm going to switch over to the AWS Management Console and walk you through a demo showing how to create a Lambda function which accesses Parameter Store. The first thing we need to do before we create our Lambda function is to create an execution role in IAM. This execution role for the Lambda function is going to define what permissions that Lambda function has. So let's go to IAM and I'll show you how this works. So we'll first go to Policies, 
and we're going to create a policy that we're going to attach to a new role. So we'll click Create Policy, and I'm going to switch to the JSON view here, and I'm going to paste in an IAM policy that I'll make available to you as part of the downloads for this lesson. What this policy allows is access to CloudWatch logs, all of the parameter store API calls that start with get parameter, and get parameters by path. So we'll go ahead and review our policy, and we'll call this Lambda Parameter Store Policy. And we'll click Create Policy. So now that we've created our policy, we're going to create a new role, and we're going to attach that policy. So we'll click Create Role. We want to select AWS Service, and our common use case here is Lambda, since this is going to be the execution role for our Lambda function. So we'll select Lambda, select Permissions, and now we're going to search for that policy that we just created. Check the checkbox here and skip tags, review, and we need to give our role a name. I'm going to name it similarly to what we had with the policy, but we'll just end that name with role. So Lambda Parameter Store Role. And we'll create our role. So now we need to go to Lambda and create our function. So we'll go to Lambda, create our function, and we'll give this function a name. You can really call it anything you want. I'll call it parameter store demo. And my preference is Python, so I'll select Python 3.8. And now we want to choose our execution role. We want to use an existing role, which is the role that we just created. So we're going to select Lambda parameter store role and create our function. So if we scroll down here, we'll see that we're presented with some boilerplate code. We're going to replace this. I'm just going to paste in some code that I have prepared, and I'll make this available to you as well. Just zoom in here so you can see a little better. Now, I don't expect you to be an expert Python developer, so I'm going to walk you through what we're doing here. We're going to import a couple of dependencies. We need JSON to format some output, OS so that we can have access to our environment variables, and a package called Bodo3. Bodo3 is the AWS SDK for Python. Next, we're going to create a client object. This is the interface to the SSM service. And we're going to create two environment variables, one called env, and another called app underscore config underscore path. I'll explain what these are for in just a second. To set these, we need to scroll down here, and under environment variables, click edit. We want to add an environment variable. First one is env in all capital letters. And the value is prod. As you could probably guess, this is the environment variable that stores the name of our environment, prod, dev, test, QA, and so on. We're going to add one more here, this app config path, and we're going to call this ACG. And when we set our parameters in parameter store, you're going to see how this is important. For now, just follow along. Click Save. And let's go back to our code. So we get that value of our env environment variable set to prod, and app config path set to ACG. And now we're going to concatenate all these with some slashes. So our full config path is going to be slash prod slash ACG. We're going to be creating some parameters in Parameter Store under this hierarchy, and we're going to use the following code to retrieve those values. We're going to use the Get Parameters by Path API call in Parameter Store to retrieve all of the values under this tree structure that we're going to create in Parameter Store in just a minute. For now, let's click Save. Now, before we switch over to Parameter Store to create those parameter values, we need to go to KMS to create a customer master key that we can use to encrypt those values. So we'll go here to Services, go to KMS, and we want to create a new key. We want to use a symmetric key, and we covered this in the KMS lesson. And we want to give the key a name. Let's call it Parameter Store. Why not? Click Next. And now we need to select our key administrator. This is different than the user or role that might access the key. Now, I'm currently logged in as cloud underscore user here in my cloud sandbox. So we'll select that user as the administrator. Click Next. Now we select users or roles that can actually use the key. We want to select that Lambda role, which is the Lambda execution role we created for our Lambda function. So a quick search, and we have it here, Lambda Parameter Store Role, and click Next. So just a quick review of our policy here. And if we scroll down, we see our Lambda Parameter Store Role has access to encrypt decrypt, re-encrypt, generate data keys, and describe key. This is exactly what we want, so we'll click Finish. And we have our key. Now we can go to Parameter Store and start creating some encrypted values. So go to Services, 
go to SSM, Systems Manager, and we'll go to Parameter Store. So now we want to start creating some parameters. So remember, we want to create our parameters in a hierarchy. So I'm going to use this parameter path here, prod acg db server. So you can imagine this is going to be the name of your database server. Now there's two tiers of service that you can select from. Since I'm going to use very small values below 4 kilobytes, I'll just stick with standard. Now we have three types that we can choose from. String, which is just a plain text string. A string list, which is a list of comma separated values. Or a secure string, which is encrypted by our KMS key. I'm going to select secure string. We'll use the KMS key in our account. And we'll use the parameter store key that we just created. The value here, hello cloud gurus, why not? And we'll create our parameter. Now let's create a string list. Maybe we want a list of our database servers. So we'll create a parameter here, and this will be the path prod acg db servers. Again, standard, but this is a string list, and maybe our servers are named guru1, guru2, guru3, comma separated. Note that this is not encrypted, and we'll create our parameter. So, so far we have an encrypted secure string and an unencrypted string list. Let's create one more secure string, and how about we store a password? We'll call this prod acg db password. Standard secure string. We want to choose our KMS key again, parameter store, and maybe the value here is just hello cloud gurus again, and create our parameter. So we've created our KMS key, we've associated that with our secure values in parameter store, and now we can test out our Lambda function. So we'll go back to Lambda. We'll select our Lambda function here. And now we're going to give it a test. To do that, we need to configure a test event. We'll just call this test. And we can stick with these default values because we're not going to be using these as input to our Lambda function. So we can just do create and click test. So let's see what happened here. If we scroll down, we see some JSON output. And this is a little difficult to read. So I've actually prepared this in an editor that formats JSON nicely. So let's take a look at that. So we could see our parameters have been retrieved. We have our prod acg db password value, which is a secure string, whose value is hello cloud gurus. Now our Lambda execution role allowed this code to access the parameter and parameter store. The permissions on the KMS key allowed it to decrypt the value. Same here for the prod acg db server secure string, hello cloud gurus and our unencrypted string list. So as you can see, Parameter Store is incredibly effective at storing secrets and other values that you might want to secure. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. If not, move on to the next lesson. Thanks.